Well, here we are over the next three nights. We are saying so long to Tom Skilling, the man, the myth, and the legend. And tonight, we all know and love Tom Skilling, the man. He's been part of our lives for more than four decades here at WGN. But what you may not know is the story of Tom Skilling, the boy, whose curiosity about weather started in childhood. WKKD Weekend Sports is heard four times each Saturday afternoon at 125, 230, 330, and 430. How blessed to find what you absolutely adore and that you are able to move forward with it. I'm Sue Skilling and I'm going to tell you a story about my big brother Tom. So there's four of us in total, as far as Tom's the oldest, Jeff is the next, and I've got a twin brother who's two minutes younger than I am. Um, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at Tom's letters from camp. Dear Mom and Dad, I'm having a good time. It rained Sunday afternoon, Monday, and into today. Every one of these letters is about, has weather, in, involved. He always included us and when we lived in Jersey we would build these huge forts. Tom would find out when when high tide was coming in and predict when we should start building our fort at low tide. Marky! At a certain point in time I, we were all, at least I was, relying on Tom's predictions, just like today. Today, yeah, to keep us safe. We would try to predict when there would be a wave that would come that would threaten the wall. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the waves at all. No, we didn't have to because we had Tom. When Tom had a paper route, one of the things that we would be including were Tom's forecasts that he had typed out on his typewriter with yellow pages of paper and he'd do carbon copies. He would type that over five or six times and, and start stuffing them in the paper and that's what we would do. This is from his speech teacher. Tom is quick and sometimes moves ahead of the class. He needs to give others a chance to speak. In 1965, we moved to Aurora from Westfield, New Jersey. This feels awfully familiar. I can't tell you the number of times I've made this trip. The move to Aurora and to the Midwest uh, by my family, it turned out to be a seminal development in my, my whole life. I had seen in books when I was growing up in New Jersey these Midwestern squall lines coming in with their green-hued clouds. We were playing baseball April 21st, 1967, and a squall line appeared on the horizon. I'll never forget that sky. I've never seen anything like it. And I thought, my God, here I am witnessing it in real life. Mom's yelling at us, we got to get into the basement. We got to get into the basement. You know, where's Tom? And that's when Tom was outside <laughs> still looking at it. He was absolutely enthralled with it. He wanted to see every <laughs> moment of it. Wow, I tell you, that's it. That, wow, this is, this is amazing. I tell you, like a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Such a beautiful job they've done with this house. It looks so nice. Jeff had built an office down in the basement for Tom so that he could have this whole thing set up. We called it a weather office down there and we had gotten paneling and we hammered it in and all. <laughs> So it was kind of like a family effort on that. Susie was in on that. You know, he had multiple maps, and I mean, he, he'd have them all over the place. He walks on them, he'd be scribbling on them, he'd be rewriting things. It took a long time before they took your stuff down from the... Your, oh, your the anemometer, stuff. is that yeah, right? I'm, I'm, I didn't get I'm your Brian name. I'm Brian Carson. 
Oh, yeah. you're the Carsons. Sure. You're still here. Oh, yeah, I'm still here. For God's sake. When I was young and I would go through instrument, weather instrument catalogs and dream about the equipment, it was always too expensive for me to afford the really cool stuff. Growing up with somebody like Tom, it's it's just magical. I mean, there was, there was never a dull moment. Tom writes this letter. Mom and Dad don't know. We, of course, don't know. When he wrote this letter to WKKD, and we didn't know it, he'd written it and he mailed it to them, he offered to be their weatherman. This fellow knocks on the door, and it's a fellow named Rusty Tim. All I remember is Tom being in the suit and that this was something pretty big. He wanted to meet this kid, kid. that wrote this letter, see, and he and hired called him. called him this kid. He would do the weather forecasts um, at, in the morning. I mean, he must have gotten up about four or five to do the weather um, forecasts. And then he'd call them in to the station and they would tape them. So he did that Monday through Friday. This is where my television career started, right over there where the gazebo is. That used to be a building that housed a movie theater and it housed Channel 60 right here on the banks of the Fox River. But I had my first teletype there that gave me coded weather reports and I would hand plot them and we built a weather set and after high school I would drive down here, get a television weather show ready and every night at 6.30 we'd go on the air with a local newscast they did and I'd do the weather segment in my senior year in high school. I mean, it was an incredible opportunity, but yeah, it must have been strange for the local audience to see a, a young high schooler doing the weather just watching him and I mean just how much he loved doing what he was doing I mean he could do it for hours he was happy doing it and he was good at it I had opportunities to do things here that I could only dream about he was just a natural actually what you see today is kind of what he was back then Amazing. These stories are amazing. From such a tender age. <laughs> I and know. It is astounding. 